My name is Jenny, and as was said, I work, I'm from Pittsburgh, and I work at IBM. I'm going to be talking about Frankensteining software. My co-speaker, Joe Kramer, is unable to be here today. Um, he is in Pittsburgh right now. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to be talking about our migration from a legacy system into a hybrid cloud model and how we had to evolve and change things throughout that. Well, the next slide is legal notes. These are not IBM's words, they are my own. Uh, okay, so what happened? We had a system, uh, actually I would like to be over here. So what happened? Well, first a little background. Our office works in an enterprise search engine called Watson Explorer. I'll be referring to this as WEX throughout, and it was built by a startup that was acquired about four years ago. So it has a lot of, you know, some legacy code exists, you know. Um, since then, the world has changed. Okay, we have an on-premise system in an environment that's moving towards, the, that is shifting towards the cloud. I click on here. Okay, issues moving forward with our current pro um, system. So it was in, created in startup mode. And by this, I mean, okay, um, that there's a lot of technical debt that was just embedded <coughs> into the software and is now unable to be pulled out very easily. There's not proper documentation from some of the earlier things that were built in it. And there's some architecture mix, mismatch of different modules. Some have Java and C across each side, which has caused a lot of resource, resource allocation problems. And we've invested in putting the JVM into things. Um, and then there exists several black boxes where no one really knows what's going on anymore. But then it, it was optimized for a single node crawling and we're now in a, which is not practical or feasible for moving on to a cloud system. So, okay. There's been a shift throughout the tech world, or throughout the tech world towards the cloud, and IBM has been loudly announcing that they are, their intention of becoming a cloud computing company. When offering management talked to us about migrating to the cloud, it was clear we'd need to design something new to be able to keep up with this. There are a few things in the way. It's not that easy. We have existing customers on WEX that we still need to be supporting. There's time and personnel constraints, and there are only so many developers and so many hours in the day. Additionally, the path to a new system and what that system should look like is unknown. So what now? We need a plan. I'm gonna walk you through the steps that we took to be able to design the system and how we moved. So what do we want to focus on? What quality attributes do we care about? And what is the ideal future? How should the architecture reflect that? How do we design this system? The technical validation of can we actually do that? Will we have the manpower? Uh, do the hypothetical integrations actually work? Looking back and validating the system we want. Iterating and readjusting based off of that and because the system is never perfect and we'll need to be changing constantly. And then moving forward. Are there any questions right now while we're just killing time? <laughs> so I'll be taking questions at the beginning. Can you explain the ostrich? Okay, so I was Googling plan under like uh, things that were able to be used without licensing problems and I couldn't find anything I liked, and I randomly saw that ostrich, and that I put it in as a filler till I found something better, and that I just really liked it, so I left it. <laughs> it was just a filler image, but then it was just kind of fantastic. So, any other questions? That's where we were? Yes. Yes, we were at the ostrich. Okay. No, it's okay. Okay, so where are we actually going? 
We're moving to the cloud, but what other integrations are we going to have to be working with with actually moving to the cloud? We want to keep a lot of the functionality of the previous system. Um, I don't know if we said this before, but what was missed in all of that was OM told us our offering management said we'd like to have a cloud system and our previous system is not really able to keep up for that, so we have to build a new system. That might have gotten lost in translation a little bit. So we want to still be having an enterprise search engine. So we want to have the basic functionality of our previous system, but we want to make sure it's nice and modifiable. We don't really know exactly where we're going, so we're trying to keep it flexible and we need, what do we want to focus on? So first we started looking at what would our ideal future be. So it's just, we're, you're sitting around, you say, okay, I'm gonna put a cloud system, like what would you want? You're just sitting around launch table talking about what you'd want. Uh, so modifiability, because the world is constantly changing and we don't really know where we're always going. Testability, so we know we have the correct behavior and everything is working right. Scalability, a lot of the problems with our previous system is the fact that the single node optimization for crawling is not scalable for a cloud system and cloud environment. It was created and in time before the prevalence of DevOps and uh, importance of cloud computing. Uh, security is a, you need to always be secure and ease of deployment to make sure that we always know where we're actually going with. So at this point in our timeline, we can't look into the, we can't move into the future without looking into the past first. So we'd done a system analysis on our previous legacy system in November and began to really look at the situation we were stuck in and try and find a solution. Uh, frankly, this was, and then we began working on a problem analysis. So this was May last year. And actually, this was spurred by my co-author, Joe Kramer. He went to the Saturn Technical Debt Workshop last year and came home like crying, saying that he was the worst case, and he was just so sad that he went home and wrote this. Like he went home from Saturn and wrote this. He has told me that this diagram right here haunts his nightmares. He dreamt about it for several months because we had a lot of, he realized we have a lot of negative value things that are invisible in our software. So we have a lot of technical debt we didn't really realize we do have. Well, it can't be that bad, right? So let me show you the stack at a very, very high level. We don't need to go too in depth. So I said it's a, we have a search engine, so we have data. We grab the data with some connectors. Crawler, it gets indexed. You can search stuff. You know, a pretty general thing. Okay, I work on this team. Okay, so that still doesn't seem too bad. This is written in Java. It's from about 2011. It has about 75% tested, you know, pretty recent. Remember I said some things about black boxes? Um, so this was written in about 2004. It hasn't really been touched much since then or updated. Um, I ran some unit tests on it before I left, uh, you know, a health report, and it said it has 6% unit test coverage. So there's a lot of just not really anyone knows what's going on there. There's not proper unit testing. And, you know, there's some problems. Like we said, legacy. Okay, so at this point, we started doing a technical debt anal or analysis and reduction to make sure we're not making the same mistakes. So we first looked at where are all of our problems. So test coverage. As I said, one portion that's, you know, pretty important in a search engine, the crawler, is not very tested. There's some skill set analysis or uh, alignment that's messed up as we have a, the crawler is written in C and we have fewer and fewer C developers every year. We have an abundance of Java developers and there's just a lot of tribal knowledge that's being lost every year as we lose more people. There's not proper documentation. It was created as a startup. So there's just a lot of the architecture and early design decisions were not documented. And then we have uh, some misalignment of technology. As I said, there's the mismatching of C on one side and Java on the other. And we threw the JVM into the crawler to make it play a little nicer, but we've still, it has caused a lot of problems. Okay, so reality check. These were the five that we said we cared about. Modifiability, scalability, security, et cetera, et cetera. 
So we know we really, really want to care about modifiability because the world is still always changing. Scalability, cloud. But since we have some problems with, we can't have everything. So since we have these problems with our things, we actually want to switch to debugability since we, have, we don't want to make the same mistakes. We had technical debt where we didn't, we have no idea what's happening. We want to know what's happening always now. And we want to make sure this is actually maintainable. So we kind of just had to fix our quality attributes to match that. So we decided on a future we want to focus on, but the path there is a little rocky. How do we actually get there? So at this point, we've done our legacy system analysis, and we've done our problem analysis. <laughs> Um, and we should have, we have an idea of what quality attributes we want to be focused on and what the general behavior it is. Uh, so at this point, we started doing some, oh, that didn't show up, okay. But there's still a lot of unknowns moving forward. We don't exactly know exactly what's happening. Um, but we begin modeling. So what does that look like? Well, we started doing countless models. We looked for architecture killers in each model we were looking at. Um, checked our core scenarios and began brainstorming. We knew we wanted to, as I've said, modifiability is something we really care about because there's still a lot of unknowns. Uh, our offering management had not told us exactly what we would have to be integrating with. They just wanted a cloud version. So we didn't exactly know exactly where we were going. So we wanted to make sure that we, since we didn't have a complete list of requirements from the stakeholders, we wanted to create, we created as many workflow diagrams as we could. There are random diagrams about what have we integrated with Hadoop? Just every case we could think of to make sure it was flexible enough that no matter what was there and it was put in at the last moment, we would still be able to handle it pretty easily. So as we started to converge on a few different ideas, we started doing some pro and con analysis of each of those different things. Um, and then we iterated, drew models again, and just rinsed and repeat. We were lucky enough that all of our team was in the same office. <laughs> so uh, we started doing some diagrams. And yeah, so we were lucky, and there was we were able to just uh, do some quick, cheap models of the workflow diagrams I mentioned, different structure views, and just try and get an idea of where we wanted to be going. Sometimes they were neat, not really, and none of these are neat, but sometimes they got really, really messy. Um, but once we started getting a good idea of where we were going, we started moving to actual pencil and paper. But this was really, really vital. So this is a super, super high level of what we began to think initially. Um, and it's a, we began to get like a rough image that, you know, we'll want all of these things just in the cloud. Um, and this looks like a monolith, but it's actually intended to be a series of microservices with APIs in, interacting between each of those. Um, so we could have some modularity and it would give us the flexibility to easily handle all of the unknown integrations and volatile environment that we've been talking about. So, so we want to keep the basics uh, function still, so we still want to crawl all of the data. Oh. Can we actually do that? So we now have to come up with a model we are working towards and see whether it would actually be practical to do. Time to get down and dirty. So the stakeholders involved wanted to see a proof of concept by the end of the year. It was around August at this time. However, we only had three developers on my team working on this. Uh, so and there's only so much time. We talked about in our ideal future caring about deployment, so we also at this point made sure we, any solution we were thinking about would be able to be technically deployed and we didn't exactly know where we were going. So again, we were trying to make sure we had, were able to handle late binding of deployment. Uh, security. That ended up being a bit of a problem and kind of set us back a bit. So I didn't put that firewall in before, and that ended up being a problem. So after talking with some lawyers and security experts, they told us that we were absolutely not allowed to go into the customer firewall. We'd, they just said the cloud cannot reach into a customer's firewall. Absolutely not. So we redesigned for something more along these lines. Um, hmm. Starting a little, a little familiar. So we started to notice a on the left is our stack or right 
is our initial stack from our legacy system, and then on the right is our, our previous system. Our left and right is backwards. You know what I mean. <laughs> Either way, we started to notice all of our connectors and crawler is behind the firewall, interacting with all of our data stores, and all of the connectors allow us to go to different data stores. So we started to think, what if we could reuse part of our system? Okay, it's a crazy idea, but at this point, we'd done some uh, architectures, we'd done modeling, it's about August, so we decided to start doing some tests and demos. At this point, just reuse of legacy system was an idea. Maybe it's something we would do. But we can, so we continued our technical validation, and we started just trying some stuff out. We split into pairs. We were working with another team at the time, so there was about six of us. We split into pairs, and every pair worked on something different, whether it was a thought experiment or a technical demo or learning a framework that we think we might want to use, just one week devoted to try something out, diverge and converge with all the knowledge and share it. So we could try and get scatter out, figure out what we wanted to work on, and then come back together. So we had a lot of failed experiments, a lot, trust me. Um, but all of those failed experiments helped us realize we were actually moving in the right direction and helped us know where we we're going. So would it be worth it to reuse some legacy system? I'm going to start talking about the experiment I was mostly involved with, which was the successful one, because obviously I just choose my horses, right? Um, so we decided to actually use the, reuse the legacy system. The pros of it was we were short on developers, short on time. We had an end-of-the-year proof of concept. We had to be showing. It had the basic features we wanted, or some of it. We've but the cons, we just talked about all of that technical debt we have. Okay, but where would we draw the line? So this is the part we're talking about that's a little zoomed in. As we looked at it, it kind of began to become a little more obvious that there is actually a decent divide we'd want. Uh, so the crawler is old, it's in C, that's where the majority of our technical debt is. The framework and connector plugins are written in Java, there's a clear language divide, and there's time divide, there's testing divides. Uh, the, the people who wrote the connectors and all of those things are still working here, versus the crawler, not so much. So we started doing experiments to see whether that could actually be reused now that we'd chosen a specific part of our system. We analyzed the system for reusable portions, like I just said, um, and then we started actually documenting the interaction since there was no, this was not written down anywhere, the interactions between these architectures. We had to dig through code to figure out exactly what was happening between these two modules. Even though they weren't that tightly coupled, we still had to figure out exactly what was happening. And we had to jerry rink it a little bit when we extracted it and uh, encapsulated it, the module. So we pulled out all of the framework and had to put a layer around to get it launching there's some technical things of what we actually had to do, and some of it's kind of janky, but we managed to get it running by itself, which was awesome. So then at that point, we've managed to get it working, we found a line, so we had to then validate, is this actually what we want? So we looked back at the beginning of what are the, these were the core quality attributes we cared about and that we were talking about. So we had to make sure, does what we're working, looking at, reflect these attributes. And then these are some of our secondary ones of are we still satisfying our ease of deployment, our security, testability, are we going to be able to make our deadline? So we just constantly looked back. So I make it sound like we looked back only at that point, but it was a constant thing. But it's, we just were constantly validating to make sure we were moving in the right direction. So at this point, we've done our tests and demos and we continued working towards our full stack prototype, which was in December. But it's not over. We constantly were iterating and changing throughout all of this. Every time we hit a problem, we just changed and adapted ourselves. So every time we came up with a new model or a new any idea or did anything, the first thing we looked at were what would the key risk be? What would absolutely kill this if we tried to, uh, if, we, if it was true? We just tried to mitigate, mitigate those as soon as possible. We dealt with our constant changes. Uh, the, remember I said we didn't know where we would be pushing to? 
Well, that changed about five times because offering management wasn't completely sure what exactly would make sense. So we did have to deal with a lot of different changes and things happening. Um, but we always remembered the big picture because we were very focused on what we were doing, but we always were constantly looking around and making sure that where we were in the world was where we wanted to be, actually. So at this point, we continued after we hit our demo in December, and we'd created a system. We made sure we wanted to be moving on to our production grade version. So we began working on that. And even all of this was constantly being changed. Uh, there's decisions we made at any point in here that may come to bite us back, but we continued working forward. OK, so these are the actual steps of what we did and how we got to this point. We decided on our quality attributes. We architected for, to match those quality attributes. We analyzed the existing system to see if there was anything that matched up with it, identified parallel components, and then validated whether those would actually work. But the main, main thing about this is know what you want. The saying goes, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You can ask me, would we do the same thing? Yes, we would, but I'm not saying that reuse of systems is for everyone. In this case, it worked because we built our model first and then looked for parts. I said, this is called Frankensteining software. Like in Frankenstein, we didn't go and grab a bunch of bodies and say, let's go build something. We said, hmm, we want to build a system. Maybe we should look around for some parts to get us springboarded into the project, actually. Um, oh, sorry. So there are technical concerns with everything that we've done, but we would do it again. It allowed us to get to meet our deadline and actually spring into time. Uh, so thank you very much. Can you do one question? <laughs> uh, questions? I think they said one. Great, great job, Jennifer. I apologize for the problem. It's really hard when there's no context. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember what I said in the first five minutes. OK. Question? Good. So in analyzing the existing software, were okay. there any tools that you used? Um, in this one? Yeah. Um, not really. We kind of just all sat. We were, so like I said, we were all in the same room. Mm -hmm. So we took all of the people that had been around when these things were built and put them in the same room with us. And then we're like, tell us things. Share your knowledge. But then we also like did analysis to see diving into the different interactions. We didn't use any specific software because there wasn't a good way to be analyzing those things. Um, we, there was some analyzing of what is tested, what is most documented, where would we want to be keeping this and moving it in. Uh, but it was just mostly, would we want to be using this and stuck with it for the next five years or however long? We can claim that we're going to replace the software and that our, it's not forever that we're going to be reusing the f connectors, but it's, they're going to get pretty deeply embedded. So whatever we're moving with, we had to make sure we were actually willing to move with. Yeah. 